everybody. Thanks for stopping by to check out the latest from Sailing Emerald Steel. In this video, we're going to be continuing with our series sharing what we've learned, and we'll be discussing our reefing system we have aboard Emerald Steel. And before we get started, we'd once again like to thank all of you for all your comments and thumbs up on our last video. Thank you so much for all your, taking the time to comment. We appreciate it. Hi, in this video, we will discuss Emerald Steel, the way we're sailing her. And she's a gaff-headed mainsail. That means she has a boom and she has a gaff. Now, when you lift her up, she different between Marconi and a gaff rig is, and a gaff rig is more square sail, where Marconi is a simple triangle. Uh, sailing a gaff rig is actually quite a bit harder than a Marconi due to a much heavier gear. And also, you have to sail her, like for example, if you want to attack, uh, Marconi rig, you pretty much uh, turn a wheel and she tack, where a gaff rig, you have to sail into attack. That means you have to let your head so get back winded before you uh, let her go about. Our boat is a cutter, her mast, it stepped one third of a war length aft from the bow, while sloop mast is much more forward. Uh, cutter has a two head soles, which is stay sail and a jib, but actually she can have a third one, a flying jib, while a sloop also can have a stay sail and a jib, and also can have a flying jib. So the difference between those two rigs is where the mast stands. Uh, lifting a mainsail, it's quite a bit harder than lifting a Marconi rig, mainly because it's a, it's a larger mainsail. In our case, it's a 10 ounce, so it's heavy material. Plus the gaff is quite heavy, so it takes a, a some work. Plus, we're not using a winches, just a pulley block, so we have a 3 to 1 reduction, which helps some, but still some work. That's what so, keeps jewels nice and strong. Yeah, and uh, also <laughs> remember that uh, it is, uh, this kind of rig is not for daytime sailing for a couple of hours in the bay, but for long passages, so you might uh, have to lift the sail up and down uh, sometime only once or three, four weeks unless if you run into a bad weather or you lose all the wind and you have to take the sail down. But still it's not that bad as you will see right now. So I'm going to have to kind of uh, changing between a, a throat halyard and a peak halyard. So now we're going to pick. Yeah. This is a gaff, the peak halyard. Peak halyard's on the end of the gaff. The throat halyard's right at the throat of the sail. Looks like we have some reefs tied in the sail. Yes. Now, our mainsail is up. She has a three reef points. This is the third one. We don't use that very often. Now here's the second one. There is one more rolled in. Usually when we come to anchor and we take our sail down, we like to put a second reef in. So in the case, because we're anchoring for sometimes several days, sometimes even a week or two, and we like to be prepared just in case the weather deteriorate, and we have to sail out of anchor. Uh, we like to be prepared for stronger wind conditions because we found out it's much easier to take a reef out than put it in once winds already blow pretty hard. So our sail is always prepared when we lift it up for a, a stronger, stronger breeze. Here I'm taking a, a reef points out. Now remember, if you're on the ocean, then you gotta do that. Always make sure you have a harness on you and you're tied to a boat right. because when you're standing on like this here and any wave comes, there's no way you can hold uh, balance because once you get thrown, you will be in a water before you know and then it's not exactly a good thing to do. This is the old style reefing. 
but it works well. <laughs> Modern boats, sail gets rolled in into the boom or sometimes into the mast. For those guys who have a that kind of system, uh, what I'm going to be talking about right now doesn't apply. And if your gear should strip or something happen inside a boom or a mast, you have a trouble, so nothing is, uh, you know, 100%. Now, talking about reefing, in our boat, what we made it, which we believe is a very good uh, system, is the reef line goes from a both sides of the boom. So in other words, your uh, line goes into a cringo, and goes to the other side. I have a cheek bug on the both sides, and the both sides go into the winch. The, what is good about it is two things. Number one, when the, when the wind's coming the port side like it's right now and the sail is blown into the starboard side, uh, pull the reefing down from the port side. This way the sail doesn't blow on my face. I have a clear space to work, which is one thing. And the second thing is also when uh, out here, when you're pulling on the sail because the sail is blowing away, it doesn't get pinched. Now, if the, you will be pulling from the other side, then uh, it's very easy for that sail to get pinched because the sail will be on this side here. So it's very important to have that system like this here. Now, next thing is, when I'm ready to, when I'm ready to put the reef in, I pull by hand and then as much as I can, and I have a jam cleat, the jam cleat hold the rope, and then I can put her on a winch and I winch her down as necessary while the uh, jam cleat hold it. And then when it's done what I want to do, I can uh, tie it off on a cleat while the jam cleat is still holding and I have a winch available for my second and third reef. So the jam cleat comes very handy. So it's holding a line while you're uh, moving lines between a uh, winch and the cleats. So this system I find it to be working very, very well. And I had uh, several cruisers with older type of boats who use that kind of system because most uh, uh, reefing uh, system is just a uh, one-sided and then you have to pull just from the one side doesn't matter in which way uh, the wind blows. When sailing downwind we reef our sail without changing course. Many sailors claim that when they're going downwind and they want to reef their sail they have to turn into the wind. We feel this is a waste of time and not very safe to put your boat broadside to the seas, especially if the seas are high. Now, what we do when we go downwind, it's the same thing. You lower the sails down, partially, so you have a big belly on the sail. Then uh, Susan pulls the main sheet in as much as she can, so the boom gets closer to the midship. And then I, uh, again, uh, start pulling on the reefing line to bring a sail down while Susan keep on watching it making sure that the sail doesn't get pinched and then when that thing is done then we just uh, tie it off the points and again you got to make sure then you are tied into the boat because if you should fall off uh, it would be not much of a fun and then you just uh, tie a nice you know all points uh, while you're sailing some sailors don't tire but even if bad weather when a sail start trashing you don't want to have all these loose especially sails. with our sail as big as it is we've noticed when if it's raining really hard it'll fill up with water so uh, pretty much that is then a reefing system goes from both sides of the boom this way you can always work from the windward side of the of the sail so you see right now the wind the sail would be blowing on your face it would be much harder to work than if you are on the windward side of the sail Another important thing on a cruising boat is a chafing gear for protecting your sail. And a lot of you have asked us what these funny looking things in the rigging are. Many of you have sent us all kind of theories about what you think they are, but they're actually, they're called baggy wrinkles. They're made out of hemp rope. We make them ourselves. So when we're going downwind, our sail bags out and it, it actually hits the rigging and that's why we put the baggy wrinkles up and they protect the sail from chafing we have to renew them every four or five years and we also have a couple on our topping lift over here they're just there to prevent chafe on the sail now uh, so you don't think that uh, a gaffer is nothing but a bed and hardship 
deeper through this, then we chose a Gaffric, uh, mainly because of a look, traditional look, but also through this, then uh, while we was building it, we were, didn't have an excess of money, and uh, to put up a, a rig, like our Gaffric, now there was a mast, boom, and so forth, it cost us a few hundred dollars, as a few thousands you would have to spend if you went for aluminum spars. Plus, uh, Gaffric, if you uh, uh, shoot uh, your autopilot or your wind vane breakdown, it's also much easier to uh, uh, sail her with the trim with the sails, so you would not be uh, uh, forced to sailing uh, days after days uh, by ste steering uh, by, oh, hand, yeah, yeah. by hand. And there is also other reasons, like you can fix it uh, much easier, the rig, and uh, if you should be uh, dismasted, you can always uh, pick up a new mast, any island where they uh, grow a tree. Except palm trees, I don't think that would work. Yeah. Okay guys, so that's it for now. I hope you found the video helpful. We want to once again thank all of you who support our channel through Patreon and PayPal. We really appreciate your support and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.